empower our youth through the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Join me this and every Saturday evenings from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. sharp and let's have a good conversation. God bless you. My name is Deborah Isenam Agbili and you can call me Isenam. I bring to you the biggest youth show ever here on BXTV Dark Youth in Ministry. This is where we discuss issues, resolve problems, instill values and inspire our youth through the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Join me this and every Saturday evenings from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. sharp and let's have a good conversation. God bless you. My name is Deborah Isenam Agbili and you can call me Isenam. I bring to you the biggest youth show ever here on BXTV Dark Youth in Ministry. This is where we discuss issues, resolve problems, instill values and inspire our youth through the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Join me this and every Saturday evenings from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. sharp and let's have a good conversation. God bless you. Corinthians 15 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain, therefore, no matter what you do, do it as you are doing it unto the Lord. And forget all the wages that blows, forget all the sayings of people, and don't be moved by any of them, knowing that once you strive harder, your labor in the Lord will never be in vain. Welcome to the Youth and Ministry Show, and we are live here on BXTV. We are also live on Facebook on BXTV and on YouTube BXTV GH. You can also follow us on Instagram on BXTV, um, BX underscore TV Ghana. And if you're following us on Facebook, please share, share, and don't stop sharing. My name is SNM Deborah Agbeli, and special thanks to Belclam Beauty. Palace, Belclam Beauty Palace. Belclam specializes in hairdressing, um, bridal makeup, weave on cap, perming, braiding, facials, waxing, pedicure, manicure, and I mean everything that is related to beauty. So please contact Belclam on 0244 0244-695849. Belklem Beauty Palace. Experience life with beauty. Today is going to be exceptional because I have the awesome guests here with me and um, your Saturday just got better. So please, stay put, stick and stay. We'll be right back. Thank you. Hello. My name is Deborah Isenam Agbili and you can call me Isenam. I bring to you the biggest youth show ever here on BXTV Dark youth in ministry this is where we discuss issues resolve problems instill values and inspire our youth through the teachings of our lord jesus christ join me this and every saturday evenings from 6 p.m to 7 p.m sharp and let's have a good conversation god bless you Many are of the notion that ministry is the discovery of purpose and popular ministry isn't for everybody. Yet we may this at the mercy of some leaders due to the picture they actually paint for us to see, so long as ministry is actually concerned. So if this is true, then what are other factors that contribute or constitute the barriers in youth involvement in ministry and what could be done about it please send your contributions your suggestions your questions to our social media platform on bxtv on facebook please do send your contributions your suggestions and your questions today we are discussing barriers to youth involvement in ministry and this is the part two because we started the part one last week okay all right anyways how is your weekend going and how are you how are you coping Meanwhile, we are still in, you know, the COVID era and please 
please and please try and then observe all the safety protocol measures. And um, to add to that, it's so unfortunate that um, we, are, we, are, we are all mourning at this very time and moment, you know, because we have lost actually a legend in, in, our, in our beloved country, Ghana. And so we, we pray that the Lord will keep their families, you know, in fact, all of us who will keep us safe and then console us for losing such a legend. We, we also pray that our, our former president, His Excellency Jerry John Rollins, will rest in the bosom of our maker. Like I told you, our Saturday just got better, and with me here is um, my special guest, Lil Zig. Hello, Lil Zig. Hi, Debbie. Oh, Akwaba. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now what to say? Yeah, me I don't book You're actually looking good. Hey, are you sure? Yes, yeah, so. Wow. Yeah, me I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, that is success. So, where have you been? It looks like I've not heard from you in, in a while. Um, we've been we've been around. We've been, mm -hmm. you know, um, indoors praying, and you know, wow. ministry is not all about you coming on screens for people oh, to okay. see you. Sometimes you have to do the major parts inside Whoa. so i mean every every man's secret is inside inside you know? so you you go to your maker you confine in him and then he tells you what to do to before do next. you come up so um, i've been i've been in the hiding for some time now not because i'm idle but because i'm doing a lot of things and then mm -hmm. you know hearing the word um, the voice of god, god as well yeah that. Oh, okay. So viewers, I didn't actually tell you that he is an urban gospel musician. So how has it been like, I mean, how was it like when you started this urban, you know, in Ghana, we've not really <laughs> accepted urban music yeah. here. Yeah. So how has it been like? Well, it's, it's, it's been um, by the grace of God. I wouldn't say it's, it's not been easy. Oh, okay. You know, with God, everything is possible. Sure. And so far as you have God within, and then mm -hmm. you know that whatever you are doing is from the Almighty, you mm -hmm. know that you will have to go through some ups and downs. Definitely. And then definitely you'll get there. So we started it rough um, and not too rosy, but mm -hmm. You know, the word of God also promised us that he didn't, he didn't say that we'll have a smooth sail. Oh, okay. You know, we'll go through the storms and then definitely, definitely we'll get to where we are. So it has been a rough road. Wow. You know, when we started, it wasn't that, you know, um, acceptable. Oh, okay. But now I think, I think it's cool. Mm. Well, what do you think? Well, I think, um, I think yeah, people, because yeah. we see that of a king's kid, he just mm -hmm. smoke. And they're like coming preachers, up here, yeah, like preachers. everyone. So, yeah. and I mean, we've we've transitioned. Like wow. when you check the process, you could see that it has evolved yeah. to a certain stage that I mean, people are enjoying. Wow, yeah. I think this far by grace is yeah, actually it's, it's just by grace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but didn't you ever plan on giving up? I mean, starting the whole new thing, you know? Yeah, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you start something and then you know that this is a purpose that God has given you. Sure. You don't you don't look at how things are going. You know, oh, you don't okay. check the storms and then say that you're not going to pursue anymore, you're not going to because oh, okay. whatever you're doing is based on God and it's not based on um um human applaud. Lord, yeah. You know, so definitely, you know, I might be down sometimes sure. for not seeing things move like the way I want, want to it. move. But there has never been a point where I feel like deserting or stopping what God has given me or the assignment that God has given me to wow. do. So I've always, um, you know, persevere and I then strived hard to wow. reach the goal. Then yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Glory be to God. <laughs> Amen. But, I mean, didn't you get any critique or criticism from, you know, the viewers and all yeah. that, that actually got you, you know, down and all that? Yeah. yeah. We, how how we, did you deal with that? We had bad, you know, um, comments against whatever we are doing. People said what we are, whatever we are doing was devilish and then wow. it was something that God hated and this this is not the purpose of, of God, God, you know. I, I remember once I ministered at an SDA church and the church and the elders of the church almost chased me out of the church. <laughs> you know, I was just in the middle of administration where wow. I saw that the sound wasn't coming again. I turned and they, they, they had attacked at, my, my oh, DJ because when no. we started, we thought the, the church wouldn't accept. Yeah. But when we we're going on, people started buying into whatever we were doing. The kids, you know, were just amazed 
um, about whatever we're doing. So they got, they got offended and then they had to attack us. You know, these are things that sometimes brings you down yeah. and makes you feel that maybe whatever you are doing is, is bad. It's bad. But when you also think about the aspect where God has given you a direction, okay. I mean, you're a young person. Sure. What else can you do? Mm -hmm. You can't use your talent to glorify the enemy. Never. So the best thing is what you are doing. And if people are sending you away, I mean, it's not something that's supposed to push you sure. from sure. stop um, or, or stop you from, from doing, doing whatever that. you want to do, even though it will keep you yeah. down. But I mean, definitely the word of God is there to motivate us. So, are you sure yeah. the word of God? Sure. Because some of us, we we you know we sit back and then we are like, oh, this is not happening. Like, oh, Charlie, my and my family. How did you really deal with that? Yeah, I mean, so you said the word of God, but like personally, on a personal level, how did you deal with that? Because I learned that these days people have been actually going to visit, um, you know, professionals. For counseling and all that yeah. because of the trauma uh -huh, you know that, yeah. yeah so how did you personally well, deal with that uh, me i didn't see that to be something that the word of god can deal with oh okay because the bible says that the word of god is a, it's like a two-edged sword oh okay you know it's it's something that cuts even through my the bone marrows my so god. you depending on the word of god it's not something that is normal mm. but sometimes people see see it to be like it's true and it's not true. So okay. it comes to your faith in, in the word of God. When you have faith and the faith is strong in the word of God, it should be able to encourage you. The Bible says that David encouraged himself exactly. in the Lord. So uh, you watching somebody, you know, Jesus, you, you've you heard about Jesus. Yeah. He's in the Bible. So if you don't believe the Bible, then Jesus then is all true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so please, like we said, if you don't believe in Jesus, who else will you believe yeah. in? <laughs> we would be back shortly. Stick and stay. Thank you. Hello. My name is Deborah Isenam Agbili, and you can call me Isenam. I bring to you the biggest hit show ever here on BXTV Dark Youth in Ministry. This is where we discuss issues, resolve problems, instill values, and inspire our youth through the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Join me this and every Saturday evenings from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. sharp and let's have a good conversation. God bless you. My name is Deborah Isenam Agbili and you can call me Isenam. I bring to you the biggest hit show ever here on BXTV Dark Youth in Ministry. This is where we discuss issues, resolve problems, instill values and inspire our youth through the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Join me this and every Saturday evenings from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. sharp and let's have a good conversation. God bless you. My name is Deborah Isenam Agbili and you can call me Isenam. I bring to you the biggest hit show ever here on BXTV Dark Youth in Ministry. This is where we discuss issues, resolve problems, instill values and inspire our youth through the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Join me this and every Saturday evenings from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. sharp and let's have a good conversation. God bless you. So you're welcome back to the Youth in Ministry show and my name is SNM Deborah. If you're watching us on Facebook, please share. Please do share for us. Share, share, share. And keep your comments coming. I'm going to read all of them in due time. Special thanks to Belklem for my makeup and for my outfit. Special thanks to you, Belklem. Belklem specializes in headdressing, in bridal makeup, perming, braiding, facials, manicure, pedicure, and everything that is related to beauty. Call Belklem on 244 Six nine five eight four nine zero two four four six nine five eight four nine. Belklem Beauty Palace. Experience life with beauty. Okay, so you're welcome back, and we are still on um, the issue of barriers um, to min to youth involvement in ministry. So we want to know what is actually hindering the youth from going all out 
in, in their endeavors, especially with regards to ministry. And I have with me here my wonderful Osofo Vame, in the person of Reverend Princess, or sorry, Princess Krakamu, we say, Owaka, and then Empire Ebeja. Osofo Vame, Mawakwa Badiba, youth and ministry, sir. Thank you, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Now, also, my mommy want to say, I'm here to me. Hey, why are you fool? And then they will secret. Oh, <laughs> uh, hard work. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Having pleasure in what you do. My God. Enjoying Enjoy what you do. That, that is just the secret. My God, yeah. my God. So, so for mommy, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I, we, are, we are discussing barriers to youth involvement in ministry. What are the distractions that direct our youth attention from ministry? Okay, okay first, first of all, foremost, I would say ministry. Mm -hmm. Ministry itself involves a lot of things. Okay. Okay, so ministry has to do with the great commission okay it has to do with great commission it has to do with the fact that um everything involved in the church like evangelizing worship ushering everything put together is ministry so when we say that barriers anything that we do outside that hinders the progress of all these activities in the church or in the ministry. They are the barriers. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We are preaching here tonight. <laughs> Wonderful. We are preaching. Those are some of the things. Because the Great Commission, according to Matthew 28, 19 to 20, is what Jesus has commanded all of us to do. And the people who can actually take up this course are the youth. Without the youth, we can't do this. According to Joel 2.28, it says that in the last day he pour out his spirit, and the young men shall see vision. The old men will dream dreams. The old men have their dreams, but it's the young men that will make the vision fulfill. They will sit back and say, this is where we are going. But those who make the Vision fulfilled, the dream to fulfill, are the youth involvement in ministry. Okay, so if all these things, and I, I said that uh, the things that are involved in ministry are everything we do in tightening, ushering, evangelizing, all of that. What happened after Pentecost? are those things okay so if we do away with those then it becomes a barrier it becomes a barrier yeah. Lozik, what do you think are some of the distractions what is actually hindering the youth like we already noted some people think it's the leaders you know the leaders are kind of you know of their old era and so so the kind of vibe we feel these days isn't what you know they also feel into <laughs> maybe yeah 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 say yeah yeah the big kakra yeah different be pena oh no hell 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 will break loose <laughs> yeah, so what are some of the distractions you know hindering these youths from going all out okay um you know ministry as mommy said you know it entails a lot okay. ministry is to me is a man finding his assignment okay. to uh, the Great Commission, okay. to be able to help with the Great Commission. Mm. So, you know, somebody can just be um, um, someone who takes care of widows, yeah, and then okay. that one is his or her ministry, ministry, because that is what a person genuinely can do, do. to support um, whatever God wants us to do. So whatever is hindering us, to me, First, when I started this whole thing, I thought it was the church that was keeping people away and, you know, preventing people. But I realized that it was wrong. Mm. One, is because we, the people that are into this ministry, don't even know the reason why we are in the ministry. Wow. wow. Like, we've lost our identity. 
you know, someone saw somebody singing and the person also thought that, okay, let me also do this so that uh, the church will accept whatever I am, I doing. am doing. The person has not secretly seek the Lord to know what best or what the Lord wants him or her to do for to him. Do. You get it? Yeah. So when people get, um, people are unprepared and they shift mm. into ministry, mm -hmm. you know, certain winds that blows, a little thing that comes up makes their feet oh, shiver, shiver and then they, they, they drift from the calling. A focused man is very difficult to be to be distracted. Oh, okay. Yeah. If, like, what you are doing is what you feel like God has given you, you for you, you to do, there is nothing that will stop, stop you. you. You will go to TV stations, they will sack you. <laughs> you will go here, they will prevent you, but it will never kill whatever right. is within you. Mm -hmm. So, the first barrier mm -hmm. is finding the identity of of um, um, the person that is into, into the, ministry. the ministry you get it it's not every time that people oppose whatever you want to do if yeah. when we started people mm -hmm. opposed us yeah. but here we are still, still doing it for the lord it. so certain yeah. platforms may be closed to you but other platforms may be open, open to, to you. you that's how god has done it mm -hmm. god will never send you and they will, they will not give you the provisions oh, okay. for whatever for he's you. or the assignment okay. that he's sending you to do he will always provide he knows how to let you do it. Okay. You get it. So yeah. if um, uh, Jonah can run away from an assignment, but yet the Lord will put him into a ship mm -hmm. that will, will uh, um, end him in the sea for uh, uh, a whale to swallow, swallow him. him. You could see that, you know, when the, when, the, when the purpose of God is upon you, it is very difficult. To stop. Uh, yes, for you to run away. He will just position you even when you are, going away from it he will just find a way to push you in so the first thing that is preventing us is we the people the that are people. in the ministry we don't know our identity we don't know what we want to, we do, want for to do for god we just shift into or, or or just enter into anything that we feel like doing yeah. and then that is it yeah oh so we just shift into doing what we want to do because we feel we want to just do it yeah. and they do it for doing sake i think some people also enter into this ministry thing because probably for the wrong motives obi nim say maybe mirema sika yeah obi soon nim say oh the fame is there and all that what what are your thoughts on that as of mommy Oh, before that, I also like to tackle on the barriers a bit oh, okay. because yes, we, are, we are talking actually talking about the barriers yeah. that are hindering the youth mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. you know entering into the ministry. Yeah. And this is a very big blow to ministry because sure. without the youth, it's very difficult. difficult. Yeah. Uh, I know that uh, from church history, uh, it is said that uh, Jesus Christ and the disciples, even all those who followed him, were younger than, than Jesus, Jesus Christ. Wow. Meanwhile, Christ died at the age of 33, 33. Wow. meaning mm -hmm. that he was very young mm -hmm. when he was there, including the disciples. disciples. And so when the youth is taken away from a ministry, it will become chaos. It wow. will be chaotic. chaos for us. There are so many uh, factors that uh, hinders mm -hmm. the youth uh, from entry into ministry in our dispensation. You know, like secularization is a factor, science and technology yes. is a factor, okay. heretical teachings is a factor. You know, teachings are everywhere. You find this information hmm. on, you know, our social media platform, they are there. Damn. And so we have access to all these things and uh, the youth are getting confused more and more each day wow. as to whether, because even uh, the deity of Christ is being questioned, mm. you know, by so many people, making them so confused as to whether uh, this course or this part I'm taking, taking, is it real? Is it really there? You know, and at that age, you know, there are so many things in the mind of the youth. Okay. And so there are so many information the, the person is battling with in the mind. And so there are so many barriers as to why uh, the youth is difficult for them to enter into ministry. But like you said, uh, people also enter into the ministry uh, because of uh, their motive. Yeah, the fame, uh, the money. According to studies, uh, there came a time where there was this group called the Odomankuma group. Oh, okay. Uh, they were a group 
that were actually, you know, into this um, Abosun Sem. Oh, okay. Then later, when they saw that the Abosun Numa is getting, you know, it's going down. It's going down. down. <laughs> Some of them just diverted, you know, and came into ministry, mm -hmm. calling themselves uh, prophets, pastors, and all oh, that. that. Wow. Making uh, the work they so like you said economically people actually come into ministry because of that but it doesn't take away the fact that god is there the religion is yeah. there we have a purpose mm -hmm. to fulfill Feel. and there is a god that will judge us oh, after okay. we have lived this earth Definitely. And that is what we should always focus remember. on. So some say that the church is very unfriendly. You know, with when we started, the Lord like identified the fact that he was even literally sucked out of a particular church because of his performance. Okay. Yes. Some are saying the church is not friendly to, you know, the youth. Probably they want to dress like this. The church saying, hey, Katahu, I mean, shei nikap nina, baya nina, you know, and all that. What is your take on that, Lozik? Well, um, I I think the church has its part to be blamed when it comes to these things. Okay. Um, when you check the history of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. you know the Pharisees represented the church, oh, okay. and they did so many things to prevent Jesus as a young person who has started ministry. Oh, you know. Yeah. Um, um, to the desist from whatever he was doing. Mm -hmm. You know, it has always been there from ages and it will never stop. Sure. So the church, like I was, if I had that, the chance to complete whatever I was saying, mm -hmm. I was, I would have said that first it starts, it begins with us, the people that starts the ministry. Mm -hmm. And then first it comes to the church as a whole. Oh, okay. You know, it has, it has become very difficult for the church to adjust to certain things, to this, this um, dispensation mm -hmm. and then the things that are coming up. It's not that the church should just open its gate so that we will just bring the world into it. it. But the church should know that there are certain talents and certain giftings that you know manifest through these youth. And oh, okay. the moment we do that, you know, it pushes them to a certain arena, certain mm -hmm. corners that they they wouldn't. It would be very difficult for them to to, to revive themselves back again. Oh, okay. You know. Like me, when I started um, churches, you know, do, did certain things that would have killed whatever I, I had wanted to do. You know, even though me, I didn't give up. Certain people gave up, mm, okay. and now they are not doing whatever doing they are what doing they are anymore. Do. So the big picture, it comes to the church. Okay. The, the number one cause of, or, or the number one thing that hinders the youth to jump into ministry as the church because sometimes they are even scared mm. that hey what this thing i know how to recite poem yeah um i do spoken word how would the church accept Accepted. this how would uh, um, my my leader call me to come and minister in front of people and all that you know it's it's something that scares people Boy. and it even takes the idea of ministry from their head from the... and they, they tend to do whatever they want to do whatever because they know that i know certain musicians that i can't even mention their names that they started wow. doing well in ministry but Indeed. because of one thing or the other and if you check all these big big great musicians they started yeah, from the church from the church so it was because probably they didn't get the support that they needed, needed. Mm. Um, one way or the other that that's what pushed them out out because for an instance me when i'm being invited to a church I don't go to churches because I want to charge them money. Oh, okay. But you can be invited equally with a man of God. Mm -hmm. Before they finish the thing, they will attend to the man of, of God, God very well, <laughs> and then they will leave the musician or the wow. artist, forgetting that we are the soldiers. <laughs> we go before the... The, the warriors. Yes, we, we are the frontliners. We pave the way. Okay. I know certain prophets, if... Musicians don't sing well. It is very difficult it's for them to them prophesy. To... Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That one is there. So, you know, we are certain people that the church should have paid much attention, attention to, to, but we realize that they treat us anyhow, and then it's a, it's a, it's a number one barrier. It prevents a lot of people from pursuing what words. they are supposed to. So basically, are we actually saying the church is responsible for youth's resentiveness and, you know, attitude towards ministry? Yeah, at, at a certain point, they have, they have to be blamed. Woman of God, what do you say? <laughs> well, not really. Okay. But like I said, 
um, talking about the barriers, there yeah. are so many things that are hindering the youth. Okay. You know, when you are in your youthful state, there are so many things that comes into your mind. Mm -hmm. And I said that now we are exposed to science and technology. Mm -hmm. We are exposed to you know secularism thing that has no connection to god to god and we are exposed to teachings okay. you know all these things can be factors mm. you know and so the church should also um try to devise means by which we can actually hold the youth okay. so that uh, mm. that will not also draw them away, away from, from the, the church. church and i think that um I did a research on church growth. Oh, okay. You know, uh, um, how ambience mm. actually aids church growth. And we, we realized that some of the things the church are actually doing mm. to, to maintain the, uh, the youth is by bringing in some of the worldly things, things so that they will be attracted or oh, okay. be, be, you know, comfortable when in a way mm. when they come to church so i think that the church is also doing certain things to change the situation Patient. so that they, they will be they will be kind of um flexible of, you know for them to be able to worship uh, god and all that yes but Not, moving away for the spirituality okay mm -hmm. because when we talk about secularism like you say it has nothing to, to do, do with, with the church with god definitely you know so we have to also be careful in trying to please the youth we have to be careful the kind of things we bring into the, the church. church okay and also talking about the fact that Lizzie said that oh in the church <laughs> uh, you know they are it's there. Uh -huh. I'm just saying that uh, Paul laid down some um, foundations. foundations on how people have to be punished when they fought. Oh, okay. okay. But I'm saying that if we know that we have gotten into a dispensation where we can bring a bit of secularism into the church, you know, like uh, making... Uh, the church comfortable if you don't have an ac in your church room <laughs> now it's difficult for people, people to, to come. come even your seating <laughs> even the pulpit everything the altar even the building even itself, itself you know uh, where people um, you know ease themselves and, and all, all that. that if you don't have then it's difficult for uh, uh, today's youth let me in quotes <laughs> to actually patronize the it church. doesn't matter the hand of god the power of god in that, that church. church okay so if leaders or our elders have uh, seen that it's necessary for them to bring a bit of these things in the church then they should there should be a way of also handling um especially youth who fought oh okay yeah if there has been a chain we have all seen the chain then there should be changes in how we also handle some the of youth. these issues like some churches i heard that uh, when somebody fought according to their you know yeah uh, um this doctrines uh, you are called before the church and you are chastised Whoa. in front of the <laughs> congregation and all that. Maybe there will be a kind of way this can be handled, handled. Not before the congregation. Oh, okay. Because you should also forget that Jesus Christ, when the, the woman was brought to him, mm -hmm. that the woman had um, committed, committed adultery, yeah. there was a way he handled the thing that everyone else, you know, backed out out on that issue so we can have a way so that uh, we would not send the youth away, away from, from because the without church. the youth it's actually going to be very difficult for us to fulfill the vision wow without the youth without the youth it's going to be very difficult for us to achieve what you're supposed to achieve in our christian dome that's awesome but do you also think that different churches and their different doctrines you know and what they represent contributes to this you know it does 
the, the, uh, and uh, it's not, um, I won't say it's something wrong. Okay. Even though we are all working towards the Great Commission, mm. we should know that every man of God, called by God himself, uh, has given the person a vision. Okay. Like Lizzie said, he said that if in the ministry we have different, they say, mm -hmm. if you are called to be an usher, yeah. you are called to be this. Even though you are an usher and one is a singer, doesn't mean that you are you are uh, you know pleasing different people okay we are all fighting against yes. the same course okay. or we are all moving towards the same vision oh, sure. which is the great commission okay okay so if my church authoritative kingdom chapel mm -hmm. uh, founded by elisha usu cham general okay god when god called him he gave him a vision okay okay mm -hmm. the church of Pentecost has a vision okay yeah okay and it, they will come with doctrines, disciplinary codes, ways and means that will aid us, that will direct us to so achieve nice. that vision of us. But you realize that we are all going to Kumasi. We might pass different, different routes, routes, but we are all going to Kumasi. Kumasi. At the end of the day, our destination is Kumasi. God. Okay, so okay. we will all meet there. It doesn't mean that because I pass through Cape Coast and you pass through soon. <laughs> we are doing we'll different things. We are sure. all uh, going towards the same vision. And that has to be understood mm. by we Christians okay. and not think that, oh, if these people are doing this, maybe that is how they, they have, they to, have go to, to go to get to sure. Kumasi. Because sure. when you are going to Kumasi, you realize that uh, you meet different things. When you are going to Cape Coast, you also meet different challenges Definitely. on the way. Definitely. They are not the same. And so if um, uh, Pentecost people are going and they meet a challenge on their way and because you didn't face the same challenge, you said that, oh, as for these people, why are they doing that? Or this is how they are. <laughs> but it means that we are wrong. And we that is wrong. the reason why we have to try as much as possible to so also awesome. be, to walk uh, uh, by faith and not by, by sight. sight. Thank you very much, Osof. Um, Lozik, do you think that the churches, I mean, the youths are not able to leave um, according to the church's expectations or requirements of them. And that is why probably they actually live in the church. Yeah, I think some of the doctrines um, also play a major role in the youth not being involved in ministry. Not to cut you short, especially when we want to look at chastity and then, you know, sexual, sexual purity, you know, in this aspect. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it's actually... Yeah, it's true. Uh, mommy said something that when someone um, offends God or offends or go contrary to a doctrine in a church, okay. some of these churches, you know, don't mind bringing you in front of <laughs> everyone and then you know, just what, what about yes. the sins that people committed with in their secret? Yeah. You know, so when, a, when a, a, a young guy gets a lady impregnated so because it know, comes man. out. Mm -hmm. So what about the one that also slept mm -hmm. with a lady yeah. with a mind? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, like said, uh, about what said, like how are you going to take, take that, that one, one too? too. You know? So these things are supposed to be go. It's supposed to go accordingly. Mm. You know, you have to put certain measures around it so that okay. it, will, it wouldn't push people out. Away. You know when. When certain, yeah, certain churches that when you take certain dresses to the churches, you might be sacked. Yes. And for the me, for the mere fact that people know that when you go there with this kind of dressing, you'll be sacked. It can't, it can't, you know, allow a mm -hmm. prostitute that just got saved, saved to enter into the church. Okay. Because maybe it was the first time the girl entered the church, okay. and she was wearing that, that kind, of, kind attire. of attire. But because the check door train has been so fixed, you know, you might push the person away. <laughs> away. You are, this is a person you should have given salvation, salvation to, and then to. probably would have changed the way that she dresses. Sure. So, you know, I believe that sometimes doctrines are very harsh, harsh. Mm. In, in the sense that, you know, it pushes people away more than it trains, trains them. them. But don't you also think that, you know, without these doctrines, the youth would totally go astray? Like, no. they would take things into they their own hands. They wouldn't. If, uh, because of doctrines, youth will mm. take um, advantage of situations, mm. then there wouldn't be grace. Okay. Because the law 
the law was there and then later Christ introduced grace. My God. You get it? And the Bible says that Paul says something that must we continue to sin Sin. because um, grace abounds? No, it shouldn't be that way. You know, because you can't, you can't, you can never go according to the law. When you break one, you break all. All. You get it? So when it comes to doctrines, I see doctrines to be laws. It's, It's better for the person to be welcomed and then you teach the person grace. So when a person falls in love with Christ, it is very difficult for the person to do things against yeah. Christ. You Definitely. Get it. Yeah, that one Definitely. Is cool. <laughs> it is better to bring the person on board and then teach them grace. We are still live here on BXTV and this is the Youth in Ministry show. It's getting so exciting. Let me read some few comments from Facebook. Richmond Flynn says, the youth today need God. Yes, we need God. Without God, the youth in ministry will miss the mark. Yes, definitely, we will miss the mark. Alberta, it says, powerful. Betty Jemphy says, BXTV, drawing our youths to Jesus. Amen, amen. Amen. Raymond Sikapa Edwards says, I love the submission of the beautiful young woman. It's very deep. So we would would take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Stick and stay. It's getting more exciting. Thank you. Hello, my name is Deborah Isenam Agbili and you can call me Isenam. I bring to you the biggest hit show ever here on BXTV Dark Youth in Ministry. This is where we discuss issues, resolve problems, instill values and inspire our youth through the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Join me this and every Saturday evenings from 6pm to 7pm sharp and let's have a good conversation. God bless you. My name is Deborah Isenam Agbili and you can call me Isenam. I bring to you the biggest youth show ever here on BXTV Dark Youth in Ministry. This is where we discuss issues, resolve problems, instill values and inspire our youth through the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Join me this and every Saturday evenings from 6pm to 7pm sharp and let's have a good conversation. God bless you. Babium at the bar BX TV, so na Yegusu or Youth in Ministry, a gym media. So na if you're following us on Facebook, please don't stop sharing. Share, share, share. Link up with your friends, your pals, your family, and let them know that BX TV is on fire. In fact, Youth in Ministry is on fire. I'm sure you're learning a lot right now, and I'm gonna read some messages from Facebook. Um, uh, Okay, Elisha also says, I am really enjoying this program, and I must say, I like the panels. Okay, so my panels, you are doing awesome. God bless you. <laughs> All right, so how do we make the youths rise above, you know, these barriers and break through these barriers in ministry? How do we do that? Also for mommy. And then I will say, There is always a way. Okay. Because are possible, definitely. He sent his, uh, his son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for our sins. A dying world. Okay. That's why Christ came. So we need prayers. We have to pray. pray. First and foremost. Prayers okay. can answer all things. Mm. We have to pray. And we also have to l- let the word get into us. Okay. Teachings is the way. We have to listen mm. to our if you are going to a Bible believing church, one of the sad things today is that um, we go to church all right, but it looks as if with all the going to church, we still want to live our lives how the worldly people are living, living their lives. Wow. And that is the order of the day, mm. which will not help us because that is not how our savior and master jesus has taught us to do okay and so prayers is one of them we Mm. have to pray we have to be ready to read our bible 
they have to be ready to meditate on the word. Okay. Because the word is a light unto our feet. Mm -hmm. the, the word of God is power. Sure. The word of God, like my brother said, is a two-edged sword. Sure. Which can even pierce into bone and marrow. Amen. And so we have to pray and also rely on the word of God. Sure. I think that's one of the things I have to say Same. for now. Lozig, what is your take on this? How do we break through these barriers? Yeah, and then I was saying, I yeah. mommy, mommy said all. So, <laughs> you know, um, I'm just going to mm. emphasize on what she said okay. um, about the teachings. Um, um, it's supposed to be, you, the youth are supposed to be taught ministry from, mm -hmm. from infancy. Mm. Okay. You know, it's something that I've sat down and taught about and it really, you know, hurt mm. to see great, great people who started from the church, you know, mm. departing sure. and then going to chase the secular world because of material, material things. things. So I believe that, you know, every even in our schools, people have become who they are because of what they were taught in school. Oh, okay. You know, so school teachings has influence on us um, um, as people or as human beings. So okay. I believe that ministry should be taught in the early stages or in... in in a frequent way in the church so that people will get that mindset about ministry, ministry. so they know what it is about before they enter so now people don't enter into ministry unaware yeah. or unidentified mm. and unprepared Prepared. you get it so i believe that this is what the church um, leaders and then the church board and everyone involved in our churches should do you know teach people at the moment the kids come of age, you know, yeah. we teach them how ministry is done, how you can put yourself for your maker and do things according to the Great Commission. I do things according to the Great Commission. We will want to go and take Essie's nuggets for you this week. And then when we come back, we'll continue with our conversation. Thank you. Each year, over 1.6 million people worldwide lose their lives to violence. For every person who dies as a result of violence, many more are injured and suffer from a range of physical, sexual, reproductive and mental health problems. Moreover, violence places a massive burden on national economies, costing countries billions of US dollars each year in healthcare, law enforcement and lost productivity. As we go to the polls this December, remember to be a brother keeper. Beloved, you and I have a role to play and we must see to it that we play the role well. Abstain from violence and help promote peace and stability in our beloved nation. God bless you. Thank you and welcome back to the Youth in Ministry show. We are live here on BXTV and if you are joining us on Facebook, please share, share, share and don't stop sharing. As you know, we are discussing barriers to youth involvement in ministry and thanks so much to Bel Clemu for glamming me up and for my costume. So if you want any unofficial costume, visit Bell Claim. They specialize in hairdressing, bridal makeup, weave on cap, perming, braiding, facials, waxing, pedicure, manicure. And so call Bell Claim on 0244-695849. 0244-695849. And be glammed up. Bell Claim Beauty Palace. Experience life with beauty. So like we are already on our topic, Please keep your con conversations or contributions, sorry, your suggestions and your questions coming on our Facebook platform on BXTV, and I would read them all in due time. So we are nearing the polls. Do you think, like, you know, political, I mean, issues here and there, aside our normal economical issues you know some people are also stranded and they are actually misbehaving in this ministry because of the economy that's one others also think because of maybe their political involvement what is your take on that Lozik? well this question is much complicated <laughs> um, um, i just don't really understand it so if you can break it down well Oh, okay, so like I'm saying, economically, people are looking at their economic, you know, their pockets. <laughs> and then because things are not moving on well, or Hannah and Shana are swapping fast. And then people are also thinking that maybe, 
it's because they are actually politically affiliated and all that. So they are not really doing well in the ministry. It's like they are, they are looking for second options or alternatives, you know, to, you know, get better and all that. Well, um, ministry is not, it's different from politics. Okay. You know, you can't, you can't put an agenda God has given you into into an agenda of man. Man. So it? would you say that because okay, I'm a I'm a musician or a gospel musician, I'm not supposed to, you know, involve myself in economic affairs or political affairs and no, that no, no, no. will break that's, yeah. That's um, uh, not the point. Okay. You know, you you are a citizen of a nation. Definitely. You have the right to choose a leader. Definitely. Because if you don't choose, somebody will choose a leader for you. Definitely. You know? So <laughs> when it comes to that particular thing, okay. you affiliating yourself, it depends on you, you and what God wants, God has told you. Oh, okay. You get it. Sure. People, people followed certain political parties because they, they said they were shown visions yeah. of the man, the man being president. And okay. because of that, they, they think you know, supporting them will be the best thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you supporting the man is a different agenda as to uh, the ministry you have. The ministry sure. is different because your ministry goes beyond politics. Okay. It goes beyond two political parties. parties. It cuts across. It's sure. both for MPP, it's <laughs> for NDC, it's for the CPP, it's for whoever yeah, is definitely. You get it. But when you pick sides, mm. the side is just for one yeah you know um, um, political party okay. and that one you can't push it into, into your ministry. ministry so you can put your ministry there mm -hmm. and then and then you know affiliate yourself to a political party depending on whatever you have had okay. to do or you have been assigned to do that okay. one is a personal thing Same. yeah all right how about economically also for mommy something that maybe because um their pockets ain't good enough like on my broke into almost here saying we are so funny gym when in a almost sponsor or more you know they are they are um how do we call it directors and producers and managers are buying mansions and all that for them they just have to quickly deviate you know and survive what's your take on that yeah i think uh, the fakeness in the world is becoming <laughs> the um, fakeness <laughs> <laughs> it's like nowadays people just bang on the okay. pastors and all that, but it's not only in uh, the priesthood. Okay. No, it's cast across. It's everywhere. Mm. It's everywhere. It's all around everywhere. Why? Because people are hailing uh, people who have money. Oh, okay. When you are entering into now, uh, most of our youth see, you know, ministry to be. You know, either lazing about or, yeah. you know, I will not get there if uh, uh, I enter into, you know, yeah. real ministry. Sure. And so even those who have this motive and they enter, they, you know, show off, uh, yeah. you know, cars, <laughs> buildings. You know, that is not what That's mean. It doesn't mean that God called us to be poor people. Not at all. But the emphasis is not actually... Uh, where we are now placing the whole mm -hmm. thing, you see, and I'm not saying that as Christians mm -hmm. or children of God, we don't have to partake in, partake in politics. Okay. We have to, sure, because when the righteous rule, mm -hmm. the nation is joyful. My God, when the wicked rule, we mm -hmm. suffer, yeah. and so we have a take in who our president or whoever is ruling us should be, and God equally has an interest in it. Definitely. Because it is God that actually, you know, uh, call kings. Definitely. You, you understand? Definitely. And so God has, I mean, coming to where I worship, Authoritative Kingdom Chapel, we believe that God has to rule on earth. The Definitely. kingdom of God has promised in the book of Matthew that <laughs> should we should on the kingdom earth. of God come on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. It is God that rules yeah. in that kingdom. And so, for us to be able to fulfill this vision uh, as a youth, if Lizzie is a youth, Lizzie should make sure that he should involve himself Definitely. in politics. Definitely. So that God will rule through him. Because if you don't do it, 
the enemy will bring his or her people to come and rule you. Definitely. <laughs> and so the children of God have to, mm -hmm. so that the mind of God will be, you know. Established, wow. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> but we are getting a performance from Lozik shortly. <laughs> I mean, I wish oh, this conversation wow. will continue <laughs> on and on and on and on because it's just so exciting. If the righteous doesn't rule, then there's a question mark. Mm -hmm. So, beloved, you've got to let the righteous rule. <laughs> anyway, so Lozik, um, let's get ready for you. But before okay. then, okay. I want to say one thing on this topic. Okay. That if we will have to get the youth involved in ministry, okay. then we need a third wave. Mm -hmm. We need a revival. My God. That is what we need now. My God. So all of us, First. churches, First. leaders, First. should First. pray First. for the third wave to come. Okay. Sure. So we'll be right back. And when we come back, Lozik is going to give us a short, superb performance. Thank you. Hello, my name is Deborah Isenam Agbili and you can call me Isenam. I bring to you the biggest youth show ever here on BXTV Dark Youth in Ministry. This is where we discuss issues, resolve problems, instill values and inspire our youth through the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Join me this and every Saturday evenings from 6pm to 7pm sharp and let's have a good conversation. God bless you. My name is Deborah Isenam Agbili and you can call me Isenam. I bring to you the biggest youth show ever here on BXTV DAP Youth in Ministry. This is where we discuss issues, resolve problems, instill values and inspire our youth through the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Join me this and every Saturday evenings from 6pm to 7pm sharp and let's have a good conversation. God bless you. Hey, 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 you come and emoja, and send me one crown. Come and emoja, eh? Come and emoja, na yi mama, yi mama, yi mama, yi mama. And you no come for? Uh huh. Ni wa ya je. Oh my God. Osuma, wada ba kono be uma mi. Hey, eja, uma ya nunti na. Hey, amaya yo di fo. Hey, you want your own dinner? Kwa kwa kia party say ya ba ya de fo. My God, my God. You want your own dinner? Nanka, me your comfort. Oh. Hey, you want your own dinner? I've been in shape on the grass. Mama na mo, I don't pay ni. Hey, when you na ye, I don't pay ni. Mama na mo, I don't pay ni. Hey, when you na ye, I don't pay ni. Enti, mama na mo, I don't pay ni. When you na ye, I don't pay ni. Mama na mo, I don't pay ni. Join us same time, same way next week, and it's gonna be more awesome than ever. Keep in mind that it is the human ministry. Be safe and God bless you. Hey, Hey, 
Ali si moja bia kasa. Amaya yende kiese kiafata. I bring to you the biggest hit show ever here on BX TV.